Welcome to Ullevalla in Sweden. This is the Swedish Grand Prix. And as you can see, we have had no let up in the rain since about 8.30 this morning. The track, although hard underneath, it's very, very slick. And uh, conditions we had in the 125 European Championship race were very, very difficult indeed. Goggles are going to be order of the day here. The glittering sea is always nearby. Uddevalla has 170 miles of coastline and a fabulous mainland with miles of dense forested fells. Here's the Uddevalla Bridge, known as the beautiful shortcut, and the fantastic coastal path, the result of much hard work from local clubs, schools, industry, the council and the residents. Here is Bohuslands Museum, one of Sweden's busiest and one of many interesting places to visit. A many-faceted workplace, heavily committed to the future. A pulsating core in one of West Sweden's best commercial centres. There's a lot happening in Uddevalla, the heart of Bohuslän. Well, those images clearly taking on a sunny day up here in Scandinavia, but uh, this 1,500 meter long circuit still has the hill people packed out there on the on the Rockways Quarry, and uh, good to see them out here as well. The campsite's absolutely full. They are here. They build them tough up here in Sweden. They have to because they have some very, well, very long winters. Well, it certainly feels like this rain is following us around this season. Um, we're joining me now on the MX2 start line for the second half of the championship. Dylan Ferrandis, you had a great qualifying yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I did a good start and uh, I do uh, did a good race. Uh, yesterday um, uh, rain on the track, but uh, it uh, was better than today. So today it's a uh, lot of rain. Uh, we will see up uh, up uh, can stop. Thank you. And we're going to move down the start line now yes. and I have a quick word with Zach Osborne. He's obviously missed the first half of the season due to injury. How is everything feeling now? And are you super excited to be back? Yeah, good. Um, I had a pretty decent heat race yesterday. I got a bad start, but came through pretty good to fifth so um, obviously today it's just going to be a, a gamble uh, everything's got to go right it's muddy so uh, I'm looking forward to it it'll be good either way I mean there's no pressure on me for anything so I just need to uh, get off to a good start and hopefully put it on the podium. Thank you Zach right we're going to go before we see the MX2 Moto1 we're going to take a look behind the scenes of Ice One Racing. <laughs> It's your second year in the World Championship. How steep was the learning curve last year? Uh, well, yeah, it was very steep. Uh, we, um, okay, I have uh, experience uh, for the running the, the team, uh, but in, in Enduro World Championship. Uh, and uh, of course, it, it was very hectic, and uh, we started uh, really late uh, to preparing uh, for last season. But uh, we did a really good job. Uh, I find good people around me, and uh, and uh, well, uh, was good good uh, good season uh, as the first year. And uh, and now now of course everything was a lot easier for to preparing the, this season. And uh, well, uh, everything went so good so far. So, but. Let's see, uh, of course, we wish to have uh, better luck with the riders, but uh, but that's how it is. In this season, we saw you sign Dean Ferris. Unfortunately, now he's injured. Will he feature in the plans for next year? Yeah, of course, uh, we, we like to have a, a full season with uh, with uh, Dean uh, because uh, this year he was very unlucky already uh, for the pre-season uh, time. Uh, he was uh, almost two months out, and uh, then just when he was... Uh, like getting back on his level and uh, he got this uh, injury and uh, unfortunately he's out the uh, rest of the season and uh, we had uh, big plans uh, to, to climb, uh, climb in, uh, in a higher level again and uh, this is still our plan uh, so uh, so uh, I really like to see Dean uh, with, uh, with, uh, together with us uh, to climb uh, in that level. <laughs> Dean, before you took the injury pre-season, what was the goal for 2012? Uh, I think my personal goal was to get top 10 in the championship. I think that was realistic and 
maybe towards the end of the season get some top fives in motos and uh, well to stay injury free but obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> and when do you expect to be back? Uh, my season's over this is a four month injury and by then the season's well and truly finished so um, I'm just going to focus on next season for now. And you took some solid points in South America. Did that give you some confidence coming back to Europe? Yeah, I think so. You know, it eliminated any, any doubts I had in, in my ability and to run with these boys. And um, yeah, I was looking forward to France because I'd actually I'd been there before. I'd spectated there in, in 2010. I really liked the track and it actually had a really good ride on the Saturday in the qualif qualifying race. So, um, but yeah, it, all, it sort of all went wrong and I dislocated my shoulder and that's where my, my season finished. So for now, it's just, um, you know, recover and, you know, just get ready for next season. Santu, it's your second year in the MX1 World Championship. What did you take from last year to help you improve? I know the tracks already. I have been here before, and uh, and uh, yeah, I think that that is a big biggest thing. What helps me a lot. And what was the goal for this year? Goal for this year, it's uh, be important in every race and uh, have fun with the bike and. Uh, be happy in my own, own racing though, so that is a call for me. And you took some good points in the South American Flyway Tour. Did that give you then some confidence now coming back to Europe? Yeah, for sure. I get a lot of points there from, from the South America and uh, have a school trip for me and uh, that gives a lot of confidence for me yeah, for the rest of the season. It's a really big opportunity, especially with this team so well organized. Uh, it's a long time ago I, I, I've had such a team, you know, uh, you can compare, compare this with a factory team, so uh, yeah, it's now all about me, I have to do it with the right hand. So that was a quick look behind the scenes at Ice One Kawasaki Racing, of course the team owned by Kimi Raikkonen, former, one, uh, former Formula One world champion. Feel sorry for the Monster Energy girls down there though, they're going to get very wet today. Jeffrey Hurlings will start from pole position after winning the qualifying race yesterday ahead of Arnold Tonus and Tommy Searle. But it was Searle who led from lap five for about five laps before making a mistake. Two laps to go and handing the advantage to Jeffrey Hurlings and, of course, Arnold Tonus. Uh, joining me uh, throughout the broadcast will be Cedric Malott, uh, former Grand Prix racer, Grand Prix winner as well. In uh, uh, Cedric, good to have you here. Um, just explain briefly what it is uh, that you're doing here now, who you're working for. Hello, Paul. Uh, yeah, I think about the new project of uh, Love My Time is uh, Love My Training. We offer to the European uh, Rider 1 to 5, it was uh, Simon Zekina last year, uh, kind of help for a season to coach him uh, all the season and get uh, give him uh, support for physical practicing and, uh, and also take care about his riding style and everything. We get unlucky at the beginning of the season because uh, Simon get hurt his hand, but uh, we are confident uh, till now from now till the end of the season to get something uh, good on the way. And uh, obviously we'll, we'll talk further during the broadcast, but conditions here very, very uh, difficult. You would have raced here before, as I did, but never seen it so wet, have you? No, 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 actually uh, I ride here uh, a lot of time, but uh, it's true, the, the, the track are very wet, it's uh, still raining a lot, but uh, the track is quite okay because uh, it's rideable, no, the, the, the ground doesn't stick on the bike and uh, I think we're going we're gonna to get a good, uh, a good spe spectacle. Spe spectacle. Yeah, spectacle, yes. Well, obviously, that's what we want in MX2 as well because the championship as it stands at the moment, Jeffrey Hurlings on 364, Tommy Searle on 340, so 24 points of difference between those two as Dave Nickel, our race director, gets the riders under starter's orders now. That Monster Energy 15-second board goes up. And uh, as we said, they built them tough here in Sweden. The crowd still turned out despite the weather conditions. But who's it going to be that grabs that very, very important hole shot? The start straight is absolutely waterlogged from one side to the other. Although from gate 10, there looks to be a nice, clear advantage going through. But Hurling Searle and those guys up the inside. Searle gets a good jump. And does he manage to come across? No, he doesn't. In oh, fact, Tonus again. Yeah, Donald Fer Dylan Ferrandis and Tonus. But Ferrandis up the oh, inside. Oh, somebody. somebody goes down. And that's it. Who's that? KTM rider. No. Oh, uh, he's Bertic a Swiss. Uh, yes. The Swiss rider. So Valentin Guillo then goes down, coming out of turn one, gets run over by uh, Christoph Charlier as we look down the bottom of the hill. Here's Tommy Searle and Jeffrey Hurlings making contact right on the first lap, coming out of turn three. And Tommy Searle has the advantage just like he did yesterday. 
But uh, Hurling's almost across the front then of Joel Rulon. Look how deep those holes are. Look at the water on the track. Cedric Malot, this is going to be a battle of survival. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's why uh, Searle makes uh, the pass directly because he knows it's very difficult to do the race from the back and he, he needs to pass directly to to have the clean race. And uh, I think he, he do well the, the, to, to attack on that moment. The one two five race that we had a little earlier on, the track was still pretty hard and slick in places. But as you can see, we have some ruts appearing through those corners. They will get deeper as the race goes on. But as you said, Cedric Malott, and rightly so, Tommy Sell making that important pass, certainly on his biggest rival, Jeffrey Hurlings, and uh, already starting to put a bit of a gap between him and the KTM guys behind him. He's going after Dylan Ferrandis, and he needs to do it quickly, doesn't he? Yeah, it's true. Uh, we can see now the, the other rider on the back get a problem with the goggles. Doesn't have Fernandes and, uh, and Sol uh, for the moment. Uh, the race is still long, everything can happen, but we can see the track is so nice. Uh, he's still still hard on the need. It's just the water on the top, but uh, everything is okay. Tommy oh. Searle yeah. going for a move around the outside. Fernandes so controls the inside line, but for how long? Because Searle has got the drive somewhere, gets a face full of water as he goes through that wave section. Normally that's double, double, double through there, up onto the tabletop. Probably the biggest jump on the circuit, actually. Yeah. And then it's pretty sketchy through there. He's going to try a pass, I think, there. Yeah, he's going to go inside, wide. outside. Yeah, he go outside. So Fernandes tries to go inside. Oh, oh look at the water. This yeah, is jet yeah. ski at its best. Tommy More Searle. Speed. Tommy Searle comes over the line then. Let's give you the official rundown as it happens. Uh, Fernandes, we wait for him to come through. And he does. And Tommy Searle, a slight delay on our timing there. But uh, Tommy Searle trying to find a way round now. Oh, oh, look at that. Just had nowhere to go. He was trying to stay out of the roost of Dylan Ferrandes, but right at the wrong moment, that second corner, a lot of water laying down there. And so Tommy Searle, he will just be keen to get through as quickly as he can. Yeah, you have to maybe to slow down a little bit and wait the, the right moment to, to attack Fernandes. And like this, he can save his goggles as well. But uh, uh, this, the early start of the race, uh, yeah. the early stage of the race. And there is already a big gap huh, between those guys, yeah. the two guys on the lead. But Tommy Sell having to use all of the racetrack because he doesn't want to stay behind Fernandes. The good thing about it, it's still raining out there, Cedric Malot, as Tommy Sell makes a move up the inside, yeah, he's going to he make it now. pass. He can control the inside now, go where Dylan Fernandes wants to, and uh, it's Fernandes now who's going to get a, a face full of mud and water off the rear wheel. Uh, this, Samuel Zaney. Uh, Zaney, yes. One of uh, your guys? The, yeah, yeah, from the GTEC team. We give him also a help uh, because it's from part of the team of Zekina. Yeah. And uh, I think he made uh, yeah, he made a mistake because mistake, he's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. been down almost one lap because yeah. the leaders are already coming through. But Ferrandes at the end of one lap, lap one then um, found himself being passed by Tommy Searle. So Searle leads from Ferrandes. Hurling's third and Horbeek fourth. Joel Roulance is fifth. Jake Nichols on the Nastan GM racing KTM. Good start for him in sixth. Head of Jordi Tixier. Zach Osborne back from injury on the Monster Energy Yamaha. He's down in eighth. Glenn Koldenhoff, Roman Fevre down in intent so the uh, European champion from last year as we look at the 9-11 of uh, Jordi Tixier just getting uh, into a bit of trouble coming out of that right hander he's in seventh Jeffrey Hurlings number 84 championship leader as he works his way through to complete his first full lap remember you have to go over the start finish line twice if you don't immediately pass it after the start yeah. so uh, that will give us our first complete lap but uh, looking good at the moment he's made a gap between himself and his teammate uh, Jeremy Van Horbeek not much though as Tommy Sell goes through sets the fastest lap of the race so far the 203-0 uh, Lupino ah oh, Lupino so Lupino is out and uh, he'll be disappointed with that, but uh, that can be anything around here. Yeah. But watch the onboard camera now. The amount of water doing well. To, doing well. But look at that. You can see it in all the holes in all the wrong places. And then immediately, well, I'll tell you what, he did very, very well there to get through there. Sure. And then after we give it big, big water yeah. after the start. And then, of course, uh, Guio went down, but he was just behind yeah. our camera. And there's Osborne, number 338. Jake Nichols there, 45. Ah, oh, uh, that the crash of Zaney. Oh, Zaney, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, no, 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 he's uh, Anstey, Max Anstey. Oh, Max, yes. All kinds of things going on. That was Tixier. Oh, Tixier, yeah. Tixier going out of seventh position. That ex explains why he's down in 13th place now. Glenn Koldenhoff going through 25. But uh, back up front, I think, with our race leader, Tommy Searle, unless something's happened. But... Uh, 
has a pretty good gap between himself and Dylan Ferrandis. It was three and a half seconds as he came over the line at the end of that first official full lap. Yeah. And uh, already starting to build up a, a nice advantage over him and uh, Jeffrey Hurlings. Hurlings looking good in the championship, though. The good thing about the rain, I was about to say, uh, Cedric, before we saw that onboard start, was it prevents the mud from sticking to the bike. There's a lot of water on the track, so the bikes aren't going to be that heavy, are they? And, of course, from our situation, we can see the numbers on the bike as well. <laughs> for sure. No, but uh, I think also for the rider, it's better to get the bike uh, like uh, not heavy, like you say. And the only problem, I think, is uh, for, the, um, for the glove and uh, the seat. Uh, the seat, when it's coming wet, uh, the rider has maybe the problem slightly on the back of the bike and is can me can, can be a little bit uh, um or you say uh, a little bit difficult to hold the handlebar yeah yeah but um, that kind of race is not very very physical it's just like complicated with the rain and everything but it's not uh, physical it's just uh, a lot of stress a lot of uh, kind of situation nervous race but i think everything is under control well, Joel Rulons, he's in fifth place at the moment on the Floride Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. That's him there, number 34, just jumping up onto the uh, pit straight now. He's got Jack Nichols just behind him. So uh, both these guys getting off to a pretty much good start. And uh, Jack Nichols inherited sixth place in the championship when uh, Anstey had two DNFs in Belgium last time out. Speaking of which, Max Anstey, um, we saw him fall a moment ago. He's well down the order in 36th position at the moment. Um, other people there's the Pino walking back disconsolately think he's he disappointed get, yeah I think you get problem with the bike or something or? Um, yeah possibly possibly <laughs> possibly we don't know do we because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it could be anything here it could have been a sure. fall uh, sure. damage to the bike we didn't see it so um, and also with the water water can get in the electrics as well so there's so many variables Absolutely. now that you can't control um, just by going around this racetrack this weekend on yeah. Tonus look he had a good start 28th now I think he make a mistake Ah, he's in the pit lane for yeah. change the goggles. Yeah. But uh, he's still got time. 27 yeah. and a half minutes plus two laps. And um, in these conditions, Cedric Malot, uh, former Grand Prix racer, um, now working with Love My Time with their Love My Training program. Um, when we get to sort of, you know, 10 minutes to go, we can see riders getting tired, having problems with themselves with the bike or with the, with the goggles, the gloves, that kind of thing, the lines on the track. And someone like Tonus, with his fitness, and now that he's come in for clean goggles, maybe even clean gloves, who knows? He, can, yeah, he might be able to capitalize and get himself back inside the points. For sure. I think uh, it's a long race and uh, very difficult. The, the track is going to be changing a lot with the long rods and deep rods. So I think he's kind oh. of, uh, of a track, uh, of, the, of a race. He can come back on the top 15. So Hurlings just Hurlings. goes through on Dylan Ferrandis. Yes. So we were looking at Jake Nichols a moment ago, 45, he's down in sixth place, but just as we came back, Jeffrey Hurlings found a way through on Dylan Ferrandis, and he now goes up into second position. Uh, the qualifying race yesterday was quite interesting in MX2, wasn't it? Jeffrey Hurlings made a good start, Tommy Sell found a way past uh, into second place it was then, going from third to second, in that same corner where Tommy Sell passed Dylan Ferrandis. Yeah. And for maybe 10 or 15 minutes in the race, Jeffrey Hurlings didn't look that interested. He was happy sitting there maybe two seconds back, but then suddenly, in one lap, he closed right in on Tommy Searle and was applying the pressure. And two laps to go, Tommy Searle made that mistake and went down. So now that he's in second position, Jeffrey Hurling's there, number 84 on a Red Bull KTM. He's going to try to want to do something similar, isn't he? Just, just chip away, tenth here, half a second here, to try and close down that gap, which is now almost eight seconds uh, to Tommy Searle. Yeah, I think it's interesting to see, uh, or is the gap, uh, is the, the gap growing up, or is continuing like to make the race like yesterday? Uh, yeah. If for the moment, uh, Searle and Erling's riding on the same speed, the same uh, first action, so. It's going to be interesting if Erlings just do the race uh, like safely and uh, properly. So um, let's see after maybe 10 minutes of race and um, we can we can see. Yeah. Well, at the moment, uh, we've still got 25 minutes plus two to go. Tommy Sell has 7.8 seconds over Jeffrey Hurlings. Dylan Ferrandis is third. Van Horbeek is fourth. Then we've got Joel Rulant, Jake Nichols, Zach Osborne, Robin Capel having a good ride in eighth with uh, Alex Tonkoff on the Garibaldi Honda Esther machine down in ninth and Kenny Van Duren down in tenth place. We can see Van Der... Cedric Malot. You can see Van Der here. He's just riding like uh, properly also. No mistake, he's on the fourth position for the moment. 
Yeah, he's, he's been a good, uh, I guess, backup number two rider for KTM, KTM hasn't yeah. he? And uh, Jeffrey Hurlings. You look at the podiums that he has. Uh, well, he's had three fourth place finishes and uh, four uh, third place finishes. So um, you know he's already been performing pretty good. Or well, five third place finishes, I should say, because we've had eight rounds. So hasn't been lower than fourth. Um, and that's a good solid performance. Third in the championship as well. Has yeah. a good advantage over Joel Rulons. Yeah, I like uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, Van Orbeek uh, riding. is a good style. Sometimes I want, I want him like uh, just fighting a little bit with Geoffrey. Yeah. He say it can be fun, but uh, sometimes he's just like uh, the second rider. And uh, sometimes we need, we, we want to see him a little bit pushing a little bit more. But we don't know. He's uh, the guy on the bike and he knows what he can do. So yeah. And they're good friends as well, and yeah, we sure. don't know what uh, if I they have an arrangement or anything no, like that. No, I don't that. think I don't so. Know, I don't think so. <laughs> it's racing. Uh, we've got a small crashes. Someone's down. Oh, Larson. So where's that? That's uh, coming up through the section, yeah, yes. the final whoops or the the waves. So uh, Larson, the standing construct Suzuki rider from Denmark, uh, out of it at the moment with uh, 23 minutes to go. A bit further down, though, Julian Lieber, number 33. That's him battling with Harry Kulas and Kenny Van Duren. Yeah. Down, just coming up now here. Harry Kulas on that yellow machine, the Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe uh, MX2 bike. He's third rider in shot, and he's trying to find a way past the LRT Motorsports KTM, the private KTM of Julian Lieber, number 33. I'm very surprised of the track. It's kind of different line. Um, I'll, on the beginning, I suppose there's only one line uh, clean, but uh, we can see here on the TV uh, a lot of pass, a lot of, uh, of rider changing the line, and it's good. I think it's good. Yeah, Lieber just went through on uh, Kenny Van Duren, Duren. Then, and then went wide and lost that position again. So riding without goggles as well is Julian Lieber, number 33 on the left-hand side now, having another look at Kenny Van Duren, another one of your guys. No, no, I don't know him. Give me so, a rate uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I know Cedric Liber is uh, from uh, our part, Wallon, Wallon part, you know, Belgium and yes. Flemish and Wallon part. So uh, he's from nearly the area of Bastogne. And it was good to be down in Bastogne in that Wallonie area, yes. uh, an area you know well, of course, living uh, in Namur. In Namur, yes. How cool was it riding at Namur, uh, knowing that that was your hometown, yeah. with the history that that track had? Unbelievable. Uh, actually, when I won the GP in 2003, it was like amazing because uh, it's my hometown where I, I saw the guy 500 like you also riding there. It's uh, so amazing to to riding there. It's uh, oh. it's shame. To, oh, <laughs> Lieber. Yeah, we shame we can't have a GP so there, but uh, the people in Baston was there was there for 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 looking that the GP of uh, French part we say yeah. Belgian French part but uh, uh, it was a big a big big fa uh, fest yeah well we've got 21 and a half minutes plus two laps to go Tommy Searle has 10 seconds now over Jeffrey Hurling Dylan Ferrand is still third this battle here with Harry Kulas and uh, as he goes through yeah Van Duren. on Kenny Van Duren found a way past Julian Lieber no not quite Lieber at the bottom of the hill and uh, it's good to see a privateer like Julian Lieber. The, they don't have a big budget, but look at him taking it to the factory Suzuki rider of Harry Kulas there. Hasn't got any goggles on. It doesn't look like if he has, they're completely covered. But uh, not afraid to take the challenge to him, is he, Julian Lieber? He was aiming for top 15 in the World Championship this year. He's just outside there at the moment. But, um, you know, you don't see privateers running this high sometimes, you know, with yeah. this kind of consistency now. Yeah, yeah, but... Uh... You know, when you have a, you have the talent, uh, you can show yourself anyway. So, and th this is the beginning of a long, long way, I think. And maybe tomorrow he can have a, a good team to to grow up. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it's pretty much run uh, by the family, the team at the moment. He had his brother, of course, Cedric Lieber, but uh, well, Cedric Lieber, but obviously he has uh, more than a, a few injuries over a very, very short career, and yeah. he's decided maybe if this latest injury doesn't heal, uh, maybe next year he, he decides to call it time. But yeah, yeah. But he take care about his brother for the moment, so he's nice. Well, there's the yellow 151 of Harry Kulas. Then we've got the 142, actually, Benoit Pacharel riding the Rockstar Bud Racing Kawasaki uh, wildcard, filling in for Valentin Tellier, who's had a, a torrid season as well. A few injuries that he'd uh, rather forget. The broken collarbone, the latest one from the first turn crash. This is, uh, yeah, last lesson. Running into Van Duren. No, just getting it wrong. Ah, ah yeah. catching the rear wheel. Look at that. Over the front, off the side. It's hard ground yeah. as well, wherever yeah, yeah, you fall, isn't sure. it? Sure. 
in that condition we can't do anything for that so uh hopefully he's picked himself back up but judging by the way he's just walking off the side of the track maybe not maybe a hand injury there Bottom of the hill, Zach Osborne, Zach Osborne 338, Monster Energy Yamaha, down in seventh position, going to be riding in the US next year, actually, because uh, he wants to stay on MX2 bikes as long as he can. He's, gonna, he's already 23, and uh, obviously won't be able to ride MX2 Grand Prix in 2013. So um, just going to, I guess, use the rest of the season, try and get as many points as possible, and try and get back on the pace and, and get ready for what will be uh, a season of Supercross and, and outdoor racing for yes. him. But he's already shown in Supercross this year that he's capable of getting on the podium. I think he's just come back now from the uh, from his injury and he's already on the top so it's nice to see him it's pity we don't see him directly on the beginning of the season to ride yeah him and his teammate Arnotones because those two riders could have really put a, a little bit of gap maybe between Searle and Hurlings which is at the moment a two horse race in terms of the championship Dylan Fernandez looks like he's been down. Max Anstey coming in, changing gloves. So uh, Anstey still outside the top 20 at the moment. How did he work himself up to, yeah, 25th? So uh, clean gloves. It's going to be a long race, more like a Formula One uh, yeah. pit stop at the moment. Two already for Max Anstey. But uh, Dylan Fernandez, you notice the right hand guard looked like it was just up a little bit. Not sure if he's been down or. I don't know. He's uh, still third, so I don't think he loses a lot of time. Uh, Van Horbeek's gone through. Yeah. Van Horbeek has gone through, so... Uh, and Tommy get the small mistake on the first section. Yeah, to quite Jeffrey. a lot. A couple seconds, actually. Yeah, two seconds and out. So Dylan Ferrandis, who, at the moment, in the championship, 10th, took his uh, best... Well, he's had two fourth-place finishes, uh, Moto1 in Guadalajara and Moto2 in Agada, just the other week. He's looking to try and oh. equal that again at the moment with another fourth place finish here. That was Anstey, I think, Anstey again. again so. so he's come in for those clean gloves, gone down, maybe got on the gas at the back end. Yesterday also he made a lot of mistakes. He's, uh, he's bad. I think uh, he is unlucky we can. Yeah, in the first, in the qualifying race, actually, Max Anstey came in at the end of the first lap to uh, have some work done on the bike. He obviously got involved in a crash somewhere. In, in, on, on the start, he yeah. on the start, yeah and uh came in obviously the work area is the only place where you can get that uh, repair fixed so sure um who's that somebody's just broken Sweden, down Sweden, yeah. there's 89 jeremy van horbeek now in third position here's our race leader is it joel rulant's rulant's i think yeah so joel rulant's uh, in fifth place he's got 10 seconds over jake nichols and then, uh, well, Zach Osborne, another 11 seconds further back. Alexander Tonkov having a good ride at the moment. Uh, on the Honda Garibaldi Esther, back from a broken elbow, of course, didn't ride in Belgium. Christophe Charlier on the Monster Energy Yamaha is 9th. Jordi Tixier, the factory KTM, Red Bull KTM is 10th. Robin Capel is 11th. Then Glenn Koldenhoff, Julian Lieber in 13th. Harry Kulas, 14th. Benoit Pacharel has a wild card this weekend in 15th header. Valentin Guio, Davis Ivanov, Petr Petrov, Kevin Ford and Kenny Van Duren. As we continue to look at Joel Smet, uh, Joel Smet, Joel, Smet, Joel Rulans <laughs> closing yeah, yeah. in on Dylan Ferrandis. Uh, Ferrandis. I think Ferrandis make a mistake because he's just get passed from uh, Van Orbeek and um, he lose a lot of time on the lats. Uh, he do 217, so he's probably uh, I think he made small, crash. small, uh, yeah, small he, crash. Just looking on that right side uh, with that handguard, just Obviously, it depends how much that might affect his braking as well, because if it's, because uh, you know how it fixes to the front brake mechanism, and if it, you know, can maybe jam the front brake on, or maybe uh, if it's in the wrong place, maybe prevent him from yeah. using the front brake. So who knows what's going on there? But certainly, Joel Rulox is closing in on Dylan Ferrandis closing in on fourth place and that's pretty much where Joel Roulant has been finishing um, this year since his crash in Fermo isn't it you know um, he was having a good season up until then third second first fourth then two DNFs in uh, Fermo, Fermo with that yeah. crash and then obviously since then he's been constantly more fourth than, than not yeah yeah he's very consistent this season and uh he make a lot of progress on the hard track actually he's very sand, sand, sand man yeah but uh, on the hard track he make a lot of progress just see there Dylan Ferrandez as he came alongside the back marker there uh, 116 was that I think it was Oscar Olsen uh, on an Astan JM Racing KTM so uh, 
just moved his head to the side so he didn't get all of the roost as, uh, exactly. as he went through there. But uh, Rulon's all over the back of Ferrandis now. 22 here. Dylan Ferrandis in fourth place. The Green Kawasaki, number 34. Joel Rulon's in fifth. And they're pretty much separated by uh, no more than a handful of, of bike lengths. So the next 14 and a half minutes is going to be pretty interesting for Dylan Ferrandis. If he can hang on there, that'll be great. But for the moment, he keep the gap very clear, very good. Um, Cedric, obviously we've got uh, the next Grand Prix is going to be at uh, Latvia, Kegums. Um, you never raced there as a rider, but you've seen it on uh, on the TV in the past. A little bit sandy, but not overly so. Uh, can take the rain, I think, but who do you put your money on in terms of MX2 going there? Do you think uh, in terms of the MX2 championship, Tommy Searle or maybe Jeffrey Herlings? Uh, we know Herlings is very fast on the on that track, on that kind of track. Uh, sand also, if the sand is hard on the knee, but um, anyway, Erlings get the advantage on that kind of track. I hope for the spectacle, uh, Tommy can can keep the fight and uh, can can try to, to close the gap uh, between Erlings and him. So uh, let's see, but uh, I think uh, I think Erlings is going to get a, a small advantage. Well, look at this, the gap coming down, 5.3 seconds oh, yeah. between yeah, yeah. Uh, Tommy Searle and Jeffrey Erlings. Last time around, it was 2.06.0 for Tommy Searle, 2.02.8 for Jeffrey Erlings. And the split times as well, 57.4, 57, 56.4 in favor of Jeffrey Hurling. So he's starting to claw away. And, like and, yesterday. And in a short while, he's going to be, as we look at uh, Ferrandis and, uh, and Rulant, he's going to be able to see him, isn't he? He's going to be in that second place. He's going to see, as he comes over the jump, that Tommy Sell is getting a little bit closer, a little bit closer. The danger, of course, for Jeffrey Hurlings is not to push too hard because yeah. he can make a mistake just like that, lose the front, and uh, all that time that is made up um, you know, is going to be for nothing. I, I think uh, the beginning of the race, he was just looking a little bit the, the order, just keep his place, like second, third place. He was, he was happy with that. But uh, I think now he wants to, to come back and close the gap and maybe get uh, trouble to, to Tommy. Well, as we wait to pick up our leader, Tommy Searle and Jeffrey Hurlings, we're still concentrating on the battle here between Ferrandis, Rulons, and uh, Jake Nichols just a little bit further back, but uh, he's comfortable there in six. He got seven seconds over Osborne, who's seventh at the moment. Simone Zakina. Yeah. We just saw uh, the Jake Tech Yamaha rider, number 12, down in 29th at the man. moment. I think he made uh, some mistake. Yeah, very easy in these yeah, conditions. Though. Yeah, yeah, actually. It's um, his fault. Uh, GP for the moment. He, he hurt himself this uh, beginning of the season. So uh, he take the GP one after one to, to grow up and to, to get uh, more confident to the bike. And uh, we know it's not easy to catch the GP when the season starts. So. Sure. Well, he also was uh, once a five European champion last year. Right, here's Tommy Sell and there's Jeffrey Hurlings, 2.7, that gap. So I was about to say, when we went to Brazil at Beta Carrero, Tommy Sell had the advantage over Jeffrey Hurlings. Hurlings didn't get on with the conditions, started making too many mistakes. That ground was different to this in that it was heavy, it was more sticky. Uh, but here, as soon as it started to rain, people are thinking, right, maybe Tommy Sell, but look, different line choices and everything else, maybe starting to get rattled now as Hurling's closing in, and Hurling's will be relishing uh, this prospect of going after Tommy Sell, pulling him in from 11 seconds and bringing it down to nothing. So this is a battle for the lead now between the two main championship contenders, the 100 on that green Kawasaki, Tommy Sell. He's just waiting the, the moment, I think. Yeah, and just not picking his lines good at the moment. Got uh, back marker just ahead of him. Hurling's just looking a little bit more poised. Uh, the line choice, completely different line from uh, from Tommy. And up on the pegs as well through here. Tommy Searle just sitting down a bit. That's going to upset the balance of the suspension, of course. So the riding style is going to come into play here, and I think that's pretty much what it is. Of course, we don't know how much time Tommy's been held up behind back markers in the last few laps, but sure. you know. It's uh, not looking good for Tommy Searle at the moment. We just know Ellings is two seconds faster per lap from, yeah. uh, compared to, to Tommy. And it will be the same again as it's they come over the line. Ten minutes to go. Everything can happen. Huh? And 2.08. Oh, so yeah. Three seconds. So pulling it back. Oh, through. oh Tommy Searle coming some, in. Yeah. 
So uh, there's obviously some kind of problem. Maybe it's gloves. I don't know. But Jeffrey Hurlings, he won't care about that as he uh, now goes on into the lead. And that will extend his lead in the championship, of course, if he stays there back to 27. And that'll be more than a race advantage, which uh, he's going to like that because so far Tommy Sell had that one DNF in the first race in Fermo. Yeah. After damage to the bike in that uh, second corn crash, uh, second turn crash. And um, obviously, as the season goes on and Tommy was closing down that gap, he would be hoping somewhere for a DNF for a mechanical failure from uh, Jeffrey Hurlings. And if it doesn't happen, <laughs> you're always going to be chasing it a little bit. And of course, now coming in for whatever reason, uh, Tommy Sell handing the advantage to Jeffrey Hurlings in more ways than one, not just a race win, 25 points, an extension of the lead in the championship, and going past the, the magic moto mark in terms yeah, of yeah. that advantage that he has. Exactly. I want to see what's happening to if he just want to change a goggle, but he keep the goggles on it, so I don't think it, it wasn't the problem of the goggle. Just it, the glove or... Yeah, normally we have a camera down there as well, so uh, maybe it was just goggles or yeah. maybe, maybe gloves. He did that in Brazil and still managed to come through, but it was uh, Christophe Charlier that he, he went by. Well, there's Tommy now. I don't think... Oh, maybe he's the glove, yeah. Probably both. If you're going to come in, you may as well change both, eh? Yeah. And I spoke to him after at the airport, actually, in uh, Brazil. There's JJ, John Jet Lucetti, team owner, team manager, yeah. uh, looking on. Um, when I spoke to him, I said, you know, why did you decide to come in? He said, basically, the, my gloves, he said, I couldn't hold on. My hand was just falling off the grip, and I couldn't, you know, twist the grip. He's on the, the throttle. Uh, and he said, I just thought, maybe I have a chance to come in, change the gloves, and have more traction on the, on the grip. On and the grip, uh, yeah. That's exactly what he did. And the body language was, you know, more aggressive straight away. And he was able to pull back, you know, two, three seconds a lap on Charlie 8. And uh, I'm guessing he's got a similar situation here. Yeah, sure. But Hurlings, it'd be interesting to see as well, knowing that Tommy Self came in, he's been thinking, OK, he has a problem. The, the next time around, the mechanic will say, Tommy Sell is back on track. Yeah. Uh, he's the glove, yeah. And uh, Jeffrey Hurlings, he just has to be mindful now. The gap, 9.8 seconds. So, see the next time we'll get a, a true yeah. reflection on the lap time. Hurlings to was 2.18. Yeah. Cost Tommy 10, 10 seconds at pit stop. Not so bad to change your gloves, but not ideal. But no, it no, might, no. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, might yeah. work out for him. Sure. Backmarker, just give him a leg by there just to let him know that he could move over to the side. Same thing here. Maybe it was goggles that he came in for because uh, already, if yeah, they were fresh gloves, yeah. it was goggles that he came in for. Maybe he couldn't see the lines, and that's why sure. he was struggling. Anyway, it's a decision, decision from the rider. If uh, if he need or he feel he need to change a glove or a goggle, he have to to come in. Yeah. To co come in. I know it's very difficult to, to ride in that condition yeah. because the the seat is very slidey because your pants is very full of mud. Yeah. And then you, you can't really hold the, the handlebar with the, all that uh, that glove very very wet. Yeah. Well, with six and a half to go, plus two laps, of course, Hurlings then has almost 10 seconds over Tommy Searle at the moment. He just came in, I guess, for clean goggles. Then we've got Van Horbeek, Rulant and Ferrandis, who's now yes. in fifth, with Jake Nichols, Zach Osborne, Alex Tonkoff, Chris Charlier and Geordie Tixier. We're getting ready to go down to pit lane to talk to the Rockstar Bud Racing Kawasaki team. Uh, maybe Jackie, maybe Minola, I don't know, but, uh, of course, we're focusing on Dylan Ferrandis, so it's going to be all about him. Yes. And, uh, He's a good kid, super talent, star of the future, definitely. Here's Amy with Dan in pit lane. Joining me in the pit lane, Stefan Desal, Dylan Ferrandis. We spoke to him before on the pre-grid. We see him each race getting more confident. He had a great start here. You must be happy with his progress. Yeah, it's going very well. We're very happy. We uh, work with him for four years now, and we try to make him growing, and we like uh, taking young guys and make them to the top. And did a very good start again. Uh, Qualifying in Bastogne was second time, so every race better. And we hope to reach a podium before the end of the season and prepare the next year in the best position possible. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Well, Stefan does say they're just uh, filling us in, but just looking at the points in the championship, Ferrandis on 139, Boutron 150. Boutron not riding because of a crash yesterday. And just two points further up, Alex Lupino. So uh, by the end of the day here, he could be knocking on the door for uh, eighth place in the world championship, Dylan Ferrandis. But... Uh, more of that in a moment. As it stands at the moment, uh, Hurling's now 10 seconds clear of Tommy.
Cedric Millot um, just saw Dylan Fernandez set. Um, he's a good rider, isn't he? Look at that. Her Van Horbeek just throwing the goggles to the team. Brave. <laughs> dangerous on the long straight like this <laughs> yeah fast straight and also yeah, uh, sure. so much movement there under the front wheel this is a difficult corner here as they yeah, drop down there drop the down. bike is making so much movement as you drop in exactly not then made easier by the weather absolutely not uh, just a small uh, from Fernandez we just told him before um, currently now uh, he's uh, st he get a good start all the time or even yesterday he make an excellent start so I think he, 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 he get a, a step up, he, he feel like he can, he can fight with the guy on the front and he, he get confidence to himself. And uh, you can see today on the bad condition, he, he know he can play with the others, so he's, uh, if I play with the, the, the guy on the top. Yeah. And it's nice to see a young guy like him uh, try to uh, take his chance to go on the front. And Jackie Vimond obviously in their corner, a guy we all know so well, former world champion himself. Uh, who incidentally is going to be one of my guests on the uh, MX Live TV show, the live studio show at uh, 2.15. So MX Live viewers can uh, tune in for that. Uh, we've also got Gautier Paulin and Harry Kulas as our MX2 rider. So that one will be brief, talking of which. Uh, Harry Kulas, he's no longer inside the top 20, so he's dropped off the pace a little bit. Yeah. His teammate, though, Petr Petrov, now in 14th position as oh, uh, crash Charlier. Off, uh, Charlier. He was on ninth position. And that is a horrible jump there because yeah. yesterday the guys were landing in this hole here right on the left side and then you have big braking bumps every year on the downside. And, and he's so slidey underneath. So yeah. And Charlier just getting oh. kicked as he took off there and uh, the front end had no chance in turn of traction. Watch this. Just gets pitched, already oh, yeah. out of shape and then loses the front, slides off and already having one eye because he knows somebody is behind him. Yeah, exactly. He take a wrong hole and maybe his front wheel on the some ruts and the back wheel on the other one. Yeah, Benoit, Petrov Benoit has gone through. So uh, already losing position. Petrov just went through in the red just a moment ago. So Charlie eight struggling to get that uh, Yamaha. Yeah, Tonus already up in 17th. We said, didn't we? Uh, a lot of time to get into the points. Right, so that was Hurlings going through, lapping. Well, look at this timing screen. So there's Tommy Searle just going through. We just saw a flash of orange KTM a moment ago. That was Jeffrey Hurlings. That gap now down to 6.1 seconds. The gap, or well, the lap time last time around, was 2.10.005 for Jeffrey Hurlings. 205.7 for Tommy Searle. So that gap, 6.1 seconds now. Here's Hurlings. He's top there. Corner. He's there, yeah, yeah. There is Tommy Searle. I just spread. Oh, Van der Rubik. No. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, Van Orbeek. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Van Horbeek out of uh, third place. So Roland passed third. So if that's a mechanical problem, the KTM mechanic's going to be very, very nervous now because you've got Hurlings leading yeah. six seconds clear at the moment. Of course, sure. we don't know the reason why, uh, but when you're pushing a bike back and you're able to push it back, chances are you've not had a crash, unless you crash and damage something. But that Beaut gap, not six seconds, I don't think. No, no, beautiful line from uh, Tommy. From Tommy. He, he go completely outside. He not stay on the ruts, on the on the whoops uh, to coming up the hill. <clears throat> I think that lap is going to be very, very nice also. And he will be able to see, just like Jeffrey Ernie's. He's running out of time, though. We're going to have uh, three, laps. three laps. Yes. Because it's 2.07 at the moment. Um, 2.07.3 for Hurlings. Tommy, 205.1, gap down to four seconds, so he's got time. It's going to be tight, very tight. It's going to be very <laughs> tight, and it might yeah. just come down to back markers or a line choice. Jeffrey Hurlings, it'll be interesting to see if he looks across he, here. He saw, him, he saw him coming back. Maybe, maybe. I think he might have been focused, because look at the... The ground that they have to hit here, it's slick. You want to get lined up for the jump at the top of the hill. And uh, and then, of course, Tommy, he will look ahead. He knows what's yeah. ahead of him, that flash of orange, Jeffrey Hurling. So this is crunch time, folks. There's Hurlings, there's Searle. The back up for the lead is back on again, and we've got 45 seconds to go in real time, plus those two laps. So we're on the, uh, well, there's three laps to go, including this one. This the two-lap board will go out next time around. it just be uh, a case of... Jeffrey Hurlings holding on, or Tommy Searle being able to close in. We've got a grandstand finale, I think. Where is... Uh, well, there's Hurlings. Yeah. 84. Now it's his turn to maybe feel the pressure a little bit. He would have maybe liked and enjoyed the fact that Tommy Searle came in for uh, a pit stop, but he wouldn't have liked the fact that the, the mechanic would have said, still out on track. Uh, Joel Rulon's now in third look after uh, Van Horbeek going missing. So Ferrandis now fourth, Osborne fifth, Nichols still sixth, 
Uh, Van Horvick, uh, sorry, yeah, Tonkov uh, is seventh. Van Horvick still dropping down the leaderboard, so uh, all those guys behind him will give you a refresh on that in a moment. But for sure. Tommy Sell pushing hard, the body language saying, I'm going to go for 25 points. He's there, Paul. Uh, uh, Sell have a beautiful line completely outside. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to take again. Yeah, yeah jumping yeah, across, yeah, yeah. just getting yes, the drive. No, no rust, nothing. Perfect line. And getting a good drive for the tabletop. And okay, Hurlings is still getting over it anyway, but it's that middle part of that wa uh, wave section. Ooh, oh, he's just there. Right there. But only on that line, I think it takes two seconds for sure. Oof. Two lap board goes out. Here's Tommy Searle. Oh, that's uh, so, no, no, okay. Petrov, I think. Maybe a lap down. So that was the back marker. Oh, Jeff Jeffrey saw so, so, so coming back, so... He's, he's responded. Yeah. 204.6, 205.7, so five seconds now, that gap with two to go. Still not impossible. Hurling, so will know, and he'll get the hurry on from the mechanics in uh, pit lane. He won't want to give up the lead here, that's for sure, because he will know in his own mind the mathemat mathematics in terms of 24 points. Sure. And uh, that three-point gap between first and second. Remember, guys, if you're watching for the first time, 25 points for a win, 22 for second, 20 for third, 18, 16, 15, and then one point, uh, one gap between the points all the way down to 20th place. As always, the second race. Uh, yeah, uh, the second race, yeah. if they were to swap positions again, like they did in uh, Belgium a week ago, two weeks ago. Tommy uh, and him traded positions, uh, second and a first, first and a second. Tommy winning the second race, that, of course, decides the overall Grand Prix victory. But Tommy will be pleased that he's been able to push back on again, but he won't be pleased that he had to come in and make a, a pit stop for goggles. But, yeah. you know, it's just how it is. And uh, he's just riding on the same uh, first section, the same lap time, uh, the same time. I think Gehling's... Uh saw him coming back yeah. and I think it might just be a mistake from one of these two guys now that will determine it whether Tommy yeah. pushing too hard absolutely and losing that ground already hurlings out of that uh, left hander coming around the balloon now so uh, that gap still maybe more than five oh, seconds crash. oh right there and hurlings has to react yeah no problem managed to do so so uh, is this Rulant? I think it is he's in yes. third place so the Floreed Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki, 39 seconds down on our race leader. Dylan Ferrandis, uh, about 15 seconds further back in fourth, so he's going to equal his two best results of the season from earlier in Mexico and uh, in Portugal. We have three, Ka three Kawasaki on the, the fourth first position. Good for Zach Osborne as well, fifth. First race back from injury. Uh, not easy riding in these conditions. Probably hasn't had a lot of mud uh, training in the U.S. since he's been over there riding and uh, recovering from... Uh, you know, from that injury, but he's uh, on the pace here, made a good start, he's in fifth place, he's sat there pretty comfortable, and uh, what is he? Yeah, he's a few seconds down on 12 seconds, something like that, on Dylan Ferrandis. Final lap, though, Jeffrey Hurlings, Red Bull Factory KTM Racing. Looking in control at the moment, that gap 3.6, though, can't afford to relax on this final lap. And we see back markers. You get in the wrong line at the wrong time. Yeah, everything can be can happen on that kind of condition. Huh? Here's Tommy Searle yeah. coming through. Back marker moves aside. Tommy will still push. Oh, it's back on. Here's the gap. Oh, and Ellings makes some mistake. Makes a mistake. Tommy Searle all over the back now then. So Tommy fighting that Kawasaki all the way up the hill. He's got Hurlings right there in front of him. So we're on. He's going to try on that line, yeah, on the outside of the hill before the tabletop. He has to get close. He has to get close. Yeah, for sure. 3.6 seconds it was as they came over the line. It's not that now, as you can see. Difference in line there as well. Uh, not he should sure. be more close, yeah, yeah, to try something. Depends how they get through here. Is Tommy doubling through? No, neither rider doubling their way through, apart from the last one at the end. But Hurlings, he will think that he's got it in control. Doesn't jump over there. Tommy, is he getting over? Just getting over. A little bit of time gained there. But here's the area, but he's just he's not close too, enough. He's not, he's not clo close enough. Exactly. So Hurlings gets on the gas. Stays up on the pegs. Tommy doubles his way through. Oh. He gets good drive. Oh, he's going for the pass. Oh, oh Tommy <laughs> Searle almost off the side of the bike. That was the opportunity. I think he might have just blown it there. 
He wasn't quite straight. He knew he had a fast line as well, as you did, Cedric Mallott. And Hurlings is going to hook the inside through the penultimate corner, and he's going to come through. Barring any mistakes in the final corner, he's going to take the checker flag and 25 points, and it's going to be another race win for Jeffrey Hurlings. Tommy Searle yeah. just missing out. He'll be so frustrated with that. If he's one or two meters, a little bit closer, I think he can try uh, to pass him there, actually. Yeah. So Tommy Searle then putting on a show for everybody, but uh, just running out of time. That gap in the end, well, it says three seconds, but um, yeah, yeah. obviously yeah. he blew it just coming out of that final corner. But there you go. No congratulations for those two. <laughs> Guess there's no love lost. <laughs> Had a lot of history this year. And, uh, yeah, Tommy Searle, will be interesting to hear what he says in terms of uh, the post-race interview, why he actually came in. But, uh, yeah, goggles, it looks like. Not easy though, really, uh, in these conditions. I mean, you can have the best goggles in the world, you can prepare them the best way, but you can have a stone or a big lump of mud, just dislo dislodge the tear off or the roll off, and uh, all that preparation can amount to nothing. So it, sure. it really is a lottery out there. Same with the mechanicals, you know, um, we saw uh, the 89. Yeah. So, Jeffrey Hurlings then wins it in the end from uh, Tommy Searle. Joel Roulance was third, Ferrandis was fourth, Zach Osborne came home in fifth ahead of Jake Nichols. Right down the bottom end there, just trying to get his bike fired up. But conditions here, not great. Maybe the rain has just stopped, actually, I think. Difficult to see, but uh, yeah, Tommy Searle just running out of time. It's the moment that Hurlings came over the line. Just satisfied with his performance, as he should be. He was closing in on Tommy Searle. Tommy Searle decided to come in for a pit stop, and uh, that cost him in the end. But it wasn't a bad gamble. It almost paid off. Maybe if he'd come in one lap earlier, blah, 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 and all the rest of it. But he didn't. And, uh, well, that's the price he paid, losing yeah, yeah, three yeah, more points. He tried that configuration of race, but uh, yeah, he's can no. be working. That he just sure, missed, yeah. uh, I think, uh, one meter. If he, he had a good line on the end. If he was a little bit closer on that uh, section, I think he can, uh, he can try to, to uh, he can win that race, actually. Yeah. So, we'll give you official confirmation in just a moment, but... Uh, of course, our timing screen says that uh, Jeffrey Hurlings, our winner, Alexander Tonkov, good ride for him in seventh place. He's looking further down, even better there. We'll mention that in a moment. Benoit Paturel. Jens Getterman in the points. So too, Davis Ivanov. Okay, official confirmation then of our First race here at MX2. But, uh, you know, it's a tough Jeffrey Hurlings wins it from Tommy Searle. Joel Roulon's third. Dylan Ferrandis fourth from Zach Osborne. First ride back from injury. Good for him. Jake Nichols, another top six finish for him. Alexander Tonkov, good on the Honda. Gary Boldy, Honda Esther. And then uh, eighth was Tixier. Coldenhoff was ninth. Benoit Pacherel points here today in the first race. Good points as well. Then it was um, Petr Petrov, Valentin Guio, Roman Fevre. Arnold Tonus got back to 14th. Boutron did start the race then, finishing 15th place, and it was Getterman, Fors, Ivanovs, Christoph Charlier crashing out to 19th, and then Andrea Chervelin down in 20th position. Um, before you disappear, Cedric Malot, um, great to have you. Good to see you at the races again, as always. Um, I saw you in Belgium a couple of weeks ago. And um, shame the weather's not great here in Sweden, but uh, what do you expect uh, for the rest of the season from, uh, from your guys? Uh, I, I think uh, I want to grow up a little bit. Uh, to, uh, I, I want to grow up a little bit. To, yeah, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, no, I want to continue that kind of uh, practice we start to doing. Uh, we we get injured at the beginning of the season. We have to to recover that time we lose, and, and uh, I think we are on the good way. It's just uh, also, it's not the physical and the, the bike. We need also get work a little bit the mantle and uh, for the moment I think uh, the, the guy just missed a little bit that mantle so it's take me a little bit time well we're going down to our winner here's Jeffrey Hurlings he's with Amy yeah Jeffrey well done on winning winning the first MX2 race of the day was it difficult conditions out there 
It was so difficult, you know. I've been, I've been struggling already for since I was a kid in the mud, and to finally make a win in the mud is just amazing, you know. My weekend is already made, to be honest. You know, it's 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 great, and you know, gotta give gotta give it up to Red Bull KDM Racing Team. You know, that bike was so fast out of the start. You know, took the whole shot. You know, got passed by Tommy, but in the end, I made it uh, made it happen, and uh, luckily got a win. You know, it was good racing with Tommy, and uh, looking forward to the second more. The hope uh, it's not gonna rain anymore, so. Uh, Anyway, we'll do our best and uh, get all prepared for the second moto and uh, yeah, try to win again. We'll see you for second race. Good ride from Jeffrey Hurlings in the end. Um, Congratulations. But uh, yeah, looking forward yeah. <laughs> to the second race. Are you sure? <laughs> but uh, now it's going to be a tough race for him and the rest of the guys. But KTM, they'll be keen to find out what the problem was with Jeremy Van Horbeek's bike before they go into that second race. And uh, give this number 84 a good check in over as well, just to make sure there were no problems with that. But uh, like we said before, Cedric Millot, these conditions, anything can happen. You wouldn't be surprised. It's like a beach race. You know, you're going to expect some kind of problem with their machine. Yeah, everything can be happen. Yeah. Uh, well, Tommy Searle was second. Is he uh, quite pleased with his performance or disappointed? Tommy, we saw you have the race lead, and then Jeffrey started narrowing down that gap. Were you having some problems with the goggles? Yeah, I was really comfortable up front, and then about with 20 minutes or 15 minutes ago, I lost. My goggles steamed up, and then I couldn't see, and started making so many mistakes, and he caught up. But. Uh, I decided to stop because I thought, I mean, the pit lane's pretty easy to get to and get out so you don't lose too much time, but I tried to stop with goggles and then I, it took me a while to get my rhythm back and then uh, I didn't have enough time to get him back, but I'm happy with how I'm riding and look forward to getting the win in the second race. Well done. Yeah, good, honest appraisal there from Tommy Searle, just pretty much as we expected. But uh, yeah, goggles steaming up, that can be a problem. Um, and it, obviously he experienced it. He had two choices there though, didn't he, Cedric Malott? Could have taken them off and got roosted or come in and be safe and have more uh, visibility. I think he made a good choice because uh, we can see on the end of the of the race he was just like almost a win the race, come back. So, uh, so um, no, I think he made a good choice. And since uh, two, the, the last two GP, <laughs> is Ellings win the first race and he win the second race. So yeah. everything so, uh, can be He'll happy. be hoping for the same again. Yeah. Here's uh, Joel Rowland. Joel, it's great to have you back on the podium. Are you happy with that result? Uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, riding was going good, so uh, it's good to be back on the podium. Uh, we had uh, one week off and it was really good for me to practice a lot and uh, it's already showing, so I'm happy. Joel Rowland's finishing third. Yeah, good ride as well. Um, of course, Jeremy Van Horbeek, disappointment for him, but hey, that's just how it is sometimes. And Joel Rowland will pick up 20 points and another place on the podium any time, any day of the week. Um, Cedric Malot, thanks for joining us in here. Um, thanks for you. Because uh, we're going to make a quick mention a special report on uh, Honda in a moment but uh, and of course we'll probably play out then at that point so I won't get a chance to say thank you but yeah. uh, these guys will be back in a couple hours time as will we be but uh, Cedric thanks for joining us and all the best with uh, Love My Training uh, the training spin-off from Love My Time and uh, all the best to JTEC Yamaha and the rest of the team thanks and thanks to, the, to you no problem thank you so Joel Rulon then Third in the first moto, he'll be looking forward, he said there as well, those injuries not helping him as uh, it's a part of the season from uh, Fermo, but um, he's back, he's had time to ride and train this last week or so, and uh, yeah, as it showed there. But uh, as we mentioned a moment ago, Honda had uh, a bit of a presentation yesterday. And as the title reveals, it was a European exclusive. The launch of our was, uh, new 2013 CRF 450R, which we uh, revealed to the press yesterday down here in the hospitality in the Honda World Motocross team. Um, very, very well attended, and we've got quite an exciting new bike to be going to the sales with later this year. I suppose it's a bit of a Honda weekend this weekend because um, we've also got another announcement that we're pretty excited about, and that is the signing of our first first rider for the Honda World Motocross team in 2013 and that's Jenny Bobrashev and uh, we'll be talking to him a bit later on. Yeah, so uh, Roger Harvey there just filling us in. It was a European launch, a 2013 machine, uh, a brand new bike, of course. Uh, the riders have ridden it, they love it. It's uh, comfortable, it's light in the air, it's uh, got a smaller feel, brand new chassis, uh, smooth power, great to corner, all those things, but the concentration is on the centralization of mass, bringing everything to the middle and lower down. And uh, well, I'm sure we'll all get to ride them one day, but um, sounds very, very good for now for Honda. And uh, as you said, uh, or as Roger Harvey said just a moment ago, 
to years for uh, Evgeny Bobrashev. Uh, they have him for, so um, he's going to wish to get a season this season out of the way as quickly as possible so he can concentrate on that. But uh, we'll be back in a moment for MX1 Race 1. For now, though, thanks for watching MX Live TV, and uh, we'll see you uh, well, in about uh, a minute's time. Ja, jag hörde det vet jag. Hoppas nu att ni hörde det där Magnus och grabbarna.